Hi. Oh, this thing's on already. All right. <laughs> um, my name's Penelope, and this is my twin sister, America. We're going to tell you a story about the hackathon effect. We grew up in the products of Boyle Heights in Ramona Gardens. Um, we didn't have much access to technology. While we were in elementary school, my mother took a computer training class for parents. When she completed that program, they gave her a free desktop computer. That's when we finally had access to technology. If it wasn't for her taking that class, we would have suffered longer under the digital divide. So we continued our education to the LUSD system, and we graduated from Lincoln High School. I wasn't exposed to code until I took a robotic class at Cal State Lake with Dr. Espinosa. It was scary at first, because I really didn't know how to code, and there was all guys in there. I was only like one of the few ladies in there. But it got more interesting because I get to learn about robots and microcontrollers, so I got more interested into tech. So, Miss, um, not Miss, Dr. Espinosa, she likes that doctor in her name. So, she told me about to go join up a meetup group, and I didn't want to go alone, so I want to take my sister with me. And since we're twins, we grew up playing soccer together, learned how to more, do motorcycle together. We're not going to tech together. Yeah, but, so my sister, she came up to me and said, oh, do you want to go to a meetup? And I told her, that sounds like a dating website, but sign me up. <laughs> and when we got there, I was surprised, because uh, I saw lots of signs that said, hackathon, and I looked at her. What's a hackathon? Uh, I didn't know what a hackathon is. I thought we were just going to meetup group. So, and, and plus, like, it just said, you don't learn how to make an app. So, which, or as it turns out, a hackathon is actually a place where programmers and non-programmers come together to learn how to make an app within 24 hours. So, we join a team, learn how to make an app, and then next we stay there very late. Our mom calls us. Hello, mija, where are you? We're at Santa Monica, learning how to make an app. How long are you going to be there? It's a 24-hour hackathon, Mom, so we're going to be sleeping over. You're sleeping where? Um, on the couches and the beanbags. Oh, and how are you going to eat? Uh, it's lots of free pizza. You don't need to worry, Mom. Oh, okay, Mija, have fun. Okay. Hey, sis, we're not grounded. We're not grounded? Woo! Woo! We're safe! Hey! Yes. All right. So we had so much fun in our first hackathon, we started going to more hackathons. It was funny, because our parents thought we were clubbing all the time. We were coding all the time. <laughs> So and we had wait, been wait, going to... Oh, no, wait. Uh, but the thing was, ah. uh, they saw the good influence Hackathon had on us when they followed us on Facebook and Twitter. Yeah. Oh, that's true. Then they started liking everything what we were doing. <laughs> okay. So we've been going to the Hackathons for the past two years, and we've been getting more involved in the tech communities. We noticed that there were few women in tech, but even fewer Latinas in tech. Um, we found out there's only like 1% of Latinos in tech, including Latinas. So they made us want to go to the hackathons to prove that we were just as good as other developers and to inspire more diversity in tech. So when we started going to the hackathons, it was so important that we had to find these hackathons because we know this is the way that we could keep access to the latest technology and how to make an app on how to work with the latest software, and how to work with the latest APIs. That man you see up there, holding those two checks, his name is Justin. <laughs> Justin, he was a foster kid before. He, he's one of my closest friends, and I look up to him, because when hackathons get intimidating, it's easier when you find somebody on the other side wanting to help you cross that bridge. He really helped us push ourselves, get over the digital divide over and over again, because, you know, technology keeps improving, so you need to keep crossing that bridge. So we wanted to go to Las Vegas for the AT&T developer event. Okay, guys? And it happened, it also happened to be where the CES was going on over there in Las Vegas, too. So we didn't want to go on the motorcycle up there, so luckily AT&T sponsored a hacker bus to get uh, developers from Los Angeles to Las Vegas. But this time, we don't want to be the only one from our community who's going to this hackathon. So we're asking our friends around. And we found out one of our friends, Harado, he knows how to do 3D printing. And we also ask him if he knows anybody, anyone else that knows, well, not knows, wants to learn how to kill it as well. So 
Uh, there was other guys that were interested, and we also got uh, our friend, uh, Rafa. Hey, man, I know one of the twins, all right? Okay. <laughs> okay, we brought our friends, Rafa. And next, he also brought his brother, which is very cool because he has also a twin brother, Noel. Mm -hmm. So it was us, a pair of twins, Gerardo, and we all got on a hacker bus with developers from LA going all the way to Vegas. And we got to Vegas pretty late because there was a truck accident and we didn't get there till 2 a.m., pretty late. So four hours later, we checked in. Oh, these are the guys we went to the hackathon with. You can see, twins right there. Woo. Uh, so four, four hours later, we check in and we found out, wow, there's 700 developers at the summit. This is going to be really tough because we found out a lot of these developers, they're industry veterans. They're there for CES that's happening later that week. <laughs> we, we wanted to work on, we saw many workshops of experts that were working on different types of apps, they were working on different types of prototypes, but we wanted to make a prototype that would make a difference in our community. And this was our winning, winning prize, is it was the body cam hack. This camera can be used by cops, it can be used by journalists, and for those who are chasing storms. We believe that this is the new face of wearable technology, one that uses face tracking technology. We were really affected what was going on by the Michael Brown case in Ferguson. We know that people have seen smart watches, they have seen smart TVs, they have seen smart cars, but they have not seen a smart body cam. That's why we wanted to work on this project. And remember the twins and Harada we brought with us to the hackathon? They actually made a 3D printed, a 3D printed prototype of a belt buckle that helps blind people to avoid hitting the walls and also, not, and also to avoid hitting someone. They want a 3D printer. That's not bad for their first hackathon. <laughs> mm -hmm. So we had so much fun in Vegas, but we later found out, we, thought, we really thought everything was going to stay in Vegas, but when we came back home, it really didn't stay in Vegas at all. <laughs> and our parents were like, where'd you get that chick? How did she make it in the bus okay? It's like, oh, no. <laughs> yeah. That, um, at, yeah. Yeah. At the mega bus, they wanted to charge me for having, like, a large bags. They kind of that as, like, extra, extra charge for that. <laughs> yeah. So it was wonderful to, for this to have been greeted with such great news because we wanted to prove that people, especially from community of color, for women in tech, for students, that ideas can come from anyone from anywhere. And hackathons can make a difference in people's lives and to their communities. And this is how you achieve the hackathon effect. Thank you. Woo, yeah, yeah.